Welcome to Fluistem Investor and Analyst Forum. I'm Dana Rubin, Investor Relations Director at Fluistem. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. A question and answer session will follow the formal presentation and will be accessible for analysts only. Please submit your questions on the chat box. If you require technical assistance during the call, please also write it on the chat box. As a reminder, this call is being recorded. And we are now presenting the forward-looking statement. It can also be seen on our website once the presentation is uploaded. It is now my pleasure to introduce the presenters and the agenda of the presentation. Yaki and I, CEO and President at Bluestem, will open with the executive summary. Holm Keller, Chairman at Kinock Foundation, will present a promotion of the innovation plan in Europe. Anna Studolkiewicz, Investment Officer at the European Investment Bank, EIB, will present the financing program. Chen Franco Yuda, CFO at Bluestem, will present a financing, a financing agreement. And finally, Yaki and I will update on Fluoristem's clinical pi pipeline and COVID-19 project. And now I would like to hand over the call to Yaki and I. Thank you very much, Dana. And thank you everyone for participating in this investor's call. It's a great thank pleasure you. to have you here. Uh, we had an exciting day with the signing ceremony in the morning, and uh, this link will be available uh, later on uh, on uh, the website. Uh, I know that we have some uh, new participants on the call, uh, and I would like to start with executive summary to give the framework of Fluistem before we're going to dig uh, more into the details um, of the uh, EIB financing. So as a reminder, the Pluristem is a platform technology. We are using a product which is derived from placenta after full-term delivery, which provides us in basically an unlimited source because we can get quite a lot of sales from placenta. The company is very active in the last decade in clinical development, and we were able to show uh, quite a lot of uh, clinical uh, efficacy and safety using our product in a variety of different clinical indications. We treated hundreds of patients all over the world, in Israel, in US, in Europe, in South Korea, even in Australia, showing a good safety profile. As of today, we are developing uh, two phase three studies, uh, one for critical limb ischemia and the other one is for muscle regeneration. Both are big, significant unmet needs. The total pipeline that Pluristem is targeting is really multi-billion indications uh, with the uh, ability to expand uh, to more and more indications in the future. And the indications that we are starting with are the one that the company uh, selected that have a, a high probability of success, but also significant market uh, opportunity once we're going to launch it uh, in the market. Next slide. We have invested heavily in our industrial platform uh, that allow us to manufacture in large scale, and that's something which has become very important now during the time that we are answering the, the threat of the COVID. We have a full GMP facility, uh, which is uh, approved by all the main regulators, uh, mainly the FDA and the EMA, which allow us to go to marketing uh, very quickly. It's scalable, and we have the ability to manufacture a real number, real, real big numbers of, of products in a very competitive uh, cost of goods. The technology itself uh, has been developed uh, here for the last 10 years, uh, and uh, we are uh, utilizing it for all of our clinical development. Our uh, concept, the biological concept of the product, uh, our cells, they are off the shelf. No match is needed between the donor and the patient. The, the cells are injected through a series of intramuscular injection. They are able to interact, communicate with the patient body, and they can secrete a variety of therapeutic, po therapeutic proteins that is pushing the body uh, towards uh, regeneration. There is no need for any immunosuppression or any significant threat treatment before using the product. So that was a, a summary of, a, of the biological uh, potency. Uh, Pluristem is a company that is developing a product, but I do want to emphasize and to make sure that we are seeing that there are a lot of assets in the company. We have, first and foremost, our clinical platform, which targets billions of dollars. 
Lubisem have a significant asset in manufacturing platform. We have uh, developed in the last decade a very strong network, network across the globe. We are collaborating uh, with the NIH, with the DOD, with NASA. We are part of several Horizon 2020 programs. Uh, and today we announced a collaboration uh, and the funding from the, from the European Investment Bank, which allowed the company uh, to work in a relatively large pipeline uh, of uh, developments. We have a strong IP, more than 140 patents are protecting the company technology and innovation that will allow us to protect them also upon, upon uh, getting to the marketing phase. And with that, I would like to hand the call for Mr. Holm Keller from Kenya. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much uh, for giving us the opportunity to share with you our position and perspective on Pluristem. My name is Holm Keller. I'm chairman of a charity that was established out of European Parliament with the aim to promote innovation investment in European companies that could potentially be globally leading. We went through a um, thorough due diligence of Pluristem in August, September, October last year and picked the company as an initial candidate of a Israeli company to be presented to the European Investment Bank for consideration under the European Fund for Strategic Investment, the so-called Juncker Plan. During that uh, due diligence, um, we took a specific look at the off-the-shelf capability of the product, which sets it apart from what else we had seen in the domain of uh, stem cells. We also had a, a substantive look at uh, the production capability and the associated pricing that could be derived from that, making this a very hopeful candidate for substantive contribution to global health. Over and above that, um, the company had presented an application of one of their candidates, PLXPAD, into COVID-19, which is a global health emergency in the moment. And as you have seen in the media, the compassionate use um, the company um, has achieved in both the state of Israel and in the United States of America um, makes this one of the more relevant candidates globally in tackling this um, horrible disease. This is still too early to tell, but um, the company is establishing the necessary clinical trials here with its extensive um, clinical partnership all around the world, um, making it um, a very thoughtful and exquisite um, investment case um, for the European public. And this is why, as a foundation, we introduced the file to the European Investment Bank. And I'd like to hand over to Anna, who at the bank has um, looked at the case of Pluristem and was leading the bank's due diligence and business with Pluristem. Anna. Hello. Uh, thank you, Holm, for this uh, introduction. And uh, good morning or good afternoon to everybody. Uh, maybe I will start with just a brief introduction um, of the European Investment Bank, as I know that some of you might uh, not be familiar with our activities. Uh, so the European Investment Bank is the investment arm of the European Union and was established more than uh, 60 uh, years ago with the aim of uh, supporting EU policies. Uh, so as such, well, we are a policy-driven institution and differ somewhat uh, from a commercial bank. And the policies that we are guided by are creation of jobs, promotion of equality and cohesion, while in general endeavoring to improve the lives of uh, EU citizens and also people in developing countries. 
Um, our shareholders are the 27 member states of the European Union. And thanks to the strong shareholder base, uh, we are a self-finance institution, meaning that we issue bonds, uh, which enable us to, find, uh, to offer uh, flexible financing terms to our clients. And we are the biggest uh, multilateral financial institution in the world with around 60, 70 billion euro of annual investments focusing on um, key areas such as uh, climate and environment, innovation, uh, small and medium enterprises, infrastructure and development. And although we finance uh, mostly bankable projects uh, with the use of the European Commission guarantee, uh, we can engage in riskier financing, such as quasi-equity or venture debt financing, which is which we signed today with Pluristem. Um, under this program of venture, venture debt, uh, we try to spot highly innovative companies, uh, potential future unicorns, mainly in the field of life science, ICT, engineering, uh, with technologies that could potentially have a great impact on uh, society and healthcare in general. Uh, we try to find companies with sound business models, skills management, and investment plan bringing the company to commercial stage. Um, as a venture debt provider, um, EIB is a long-term investor, and we provide uh, significant tickets, like 50 million um, in case of Pluristem, with uh, quite flexible interest structure, which is linked to the company's uh, performance. Mm, prepayments are usually structured as a bullet, which allows companies to focus on business development instead of constantly raising uh, equity. And unlike other VC investors, we have uh, a hands-off approach and we don't engage uh, um, in the managing of the company. Mm, our financing is uh, non-dilutive, which also helps to preserve the uh, upside for founders and uh, early investors. Uh, what also differentiates us from, from commercial bank is that we have our internal team of uh, engineers, uh, sector experts and scientists uh, who help us to assess the te uh, technical aspects of projects. And uh, together with this technical team, um, during our due diligence of Pluristem earlier this year, it was in January before the COVID uh, situation, um, we visited uh, the company's manufacturing facilities and laboratories in Israel, in Haifa, uh, where we met whole management team and got a great overview of Pluristem R&D activities. Uh, which uh, address uh, life-threatening diseases um, and we also learned about Pluristem strong uh, working ties with world-leading uh, research institutes around the world, uh, in US, in, uh, in Japan, but also in Europe, uh, like uh, uh, Charité University Hospital in Berlin. So uh, we are very proud and happy to support Pluristem's grow and development, especially in the light of uh, its expanding uh, R&D activities in Europe. Thank you. EIB for a professional, efficient due diligence process. And we look forward to continue working with you and we hope for a co fruitful collaboration. So thank you very much. And now I'd like to present the investors, the finance agreements and highlights for this financing with the EAB. So we are talking about total financing of 50 million euros with availability period of three years from signing. The purpose of this financing is to support Pluristem research and development activities in the European Union and to further invest in advance the regenerative cell therapy platform and to assist in bringing those products to market with a special focus on the clinical development of complications associated with the COVID-19. The financing will not exceed 50% of the total cost of the project and this is non-secured loan. This financing will be available for Pluristem for three tranches, depending on the achievement of certain clinical, regulatory, and scale-up milestones. The tranches are divided as follows. The first tranche comprised with 20 million euros, the second one with 18 million euros, and the third one, 12 million euros. 
Each tranche of those is treated independently from the other with several terms and re of repayment and interests. So for the first one that comprises with 20 million euros, it will be repaid five years following its disbursement. The second one, 18 million euros, will be repaid al also after five years following the disbursement. And for the third tranche, 12 million euros, we should repay it in two annual installments starting the first anniversary from its disbursement. We have an interest rate for trench A, 30% uh, deferred annual interest to be paid at maturity of the tranche. For the second tranche, we have a combination of a deferred annual interest and also a cash, cash interest, combination of 3% different, differ, uh, different annual interest and 1% cash interest. And for the third one, 2% deferred annual interest to be paid at maturity and 1% annual cash interest. Another thing under this financing is tourism obligation to pay royalties out of its consolidated revenue between fiscal years 2024 to 2030, prorated to, to the amount disbursed from the total financing. We can see here the steps for each and every royalty commitment. And, and while the uh, revenue are increased, the royalty percentage decreases. 2.3% of an annual consolidated revenue of below 350 million euros, 1.2% for the uh, consolidated revenue between 350 to 500 million dollars, and 0 0.2 uh, annual uh, uh, for the uh, portion that exceed 500 million euros. Prusen can also buy back this royalty commitment for a payment that will not exceed 50 million euros. Next slide. I would like to also give a brief highlight on the financial position of Pluristem as of today. So currently we have cash on hand comprises $44 million. Uh, in the past few months, we have been using the ATM facility that we have in place. We've also obtained several exercises of warrants and we have obtained grants that we received and approved from the Horizon 2020 program. We believe that currently with the available resources that we have in place, and together with the EAB financing, that assuming that we receive them and we expect to, uh, uh, in, in case that we will achieve the milestones, we're talking about totaling of $100 million that expect to fund the company's operation for the coming three years. And I will hand it now to Yati and I. Thank you very much, Fem. <clears throat> Before we're gonna continue to the update, uh, I do want to take the opportunity to thank uh, Anna and the AB team for the uh, excellent work that has been done. It was a very good collaboration, even though it was an intensive diligence. And for Mr. Hom Keller that led all this process in a very elegant way that led us and built a bridge between what Pluristem is as an innovative company to the European Investment Bank. So really thank you very much. Um, I would like to focus with some of the updates that I know that it's important to you. As you could see in the last three months, we strengthened significantly our cash and balance sheet position, which allow us to operate uh, in the next uh, quarters and years to achieve our milestones. Um, and uh, for uh, our time of uh, working during our clinical development during the COVID-19 rules, I would like to, to emphasize of what is important for us. We took a rule on ourselves that patient uh, safety and the medical team safety is the first priority. And we're making sure that our patients uh, will be safe and secure during these times, including uh, if we need to uh, prevent from them for coming for visits. We know that this is something which is extremely important. And we are also following exactly the guidelines of the FDA as well as the EMA for how to conduct clinical studies during the COVID-19, including uh, the entire SOPs uh, or new SOPs that we need to uh, implement and to do it successfully in the last, uh, last month. And with that, I would like to go for the clinical update of where we are staying right now. In the critical limb ischemia, this is our lead product. We have enrolled more than 80% to the, to the clinical study. It's a 246 patient study, as I remind you. As we uh, state publicly in our, in, in our press release, we, we intentionally slow down the enrollment in order to make sure that we do not expose new, COVID, new patients to potentially COVID in the hospital and we slow the, uh, the enrollment uh, in April. We are in a really final stage of discussion with the FDA and EMA 
uh, towards the interim readout. We are uh, doing check the box on all the parameters from uh, confirming the endpoints uh, to discussing the, uh, the data lock uh, process, uh, specifically in these times when we have a limited access to the clinical sites. And uh, I hope and believe that we will, be, uh, we will be able to provide a thorough update of timing uh, once we are concluding, but we are, uh, we are we feel that both FDA and EMA they are very supportive in this, in this, uh, in this process. Uh, we are expecting to continue with the interim readout, as we previously said. Uh, we do expect to see a delay of a few months and to do the interim readout at the beginning of the fourth quarter uh, calendar year of 2020. Uh, that this is something that we are watching closely and we will update you. Uh, and this is actually subject to our ability to get to the clinical sites and to clean the data uh, before doing the, the data lock uh, for the interim readout. And we are um, we're going to provide your guidelines uh, relatively soon once we're going to have a better clarity how enrollment looks during the COVID-19. We are seeing that there is some relief uh, in Israel, in the US, but also in Europe. So that's something that I believe that's going to work for us and will allow us to continue to enroll uh, as we did in the past. But we would like to make sure that we have, you have a full transparency of how it looks like and what are the current uh, challenges that we are facing. But the company is well prepared and implementing the enrollment uh, uh, policy in a very precise, in a very professional way. For the muscle regeneration, we are more than 60% enrolled to the study. Also in this case, we installed the enrollment during April to keep the safety of, of our patient. Um, we are um, we implemented additional advanced um, uh, monitoring uh, capabilities or monitoring procedures in order to make sure that we can even access the, 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 the home of the patients and to make some of the STPB uh, the data readouts uh, also in their facility with the same concept to prevent from them to come to the, to the hospital. And we're gonna provide guidelines as I mentioned in the CLI of what is our expectation, if at all, for any effect of end of enrollment for the, for the entire study. And with that, I would like to move to the update of our, our current uh, COVID-19 project. Just to remind everyone, uh, Pluristem is using the PLXPD in order to treat uh, COVID patients with respiratory complications that have developed uh, ARDS. But we are seeing a lot of data that is coming today globally. Uh, all of us saw uh, the new uh, England data, as well as the, uh, the JAMA data that was published last week, which suggest, suggests a very high mortality rate, up to 88 mortality rate for patients going on ventilation. We are using our PLX PLD product, which have a very strong anti-inflammatory and immune modulatory capabilities in order to reduce the level of inflammation and to modulate the immune response of the patients, again, the immune system of the, of, of the patients against its own body. The product uh, that we are very, very, very well familiar with it, we have a very good safety profile and when, uh, we are using it through an intramuscular injection. We, we generated initial uh, very promising data. We reported a seven day, one week follow up for uh, the patients that we enrolled in Israel under the compassion use program. Uh, the data uh, we were able to show 100% survival increase in the respiratory parameters, uh, improvement in the respiratory uh, parameters. And we're seeing a clear trend that patients that have been treated are uh, actually extubating and uh, winning out from the ventilation machine. With this data, we move forward uh, to the expanded access program per patient in the US. We uh, announced first patient in and we are continue to enroll more patients uh, in the US under this program. So what we can expect and what, can, what you can expect from us from this COVID-19 program. I do want to formally announce that we have filed an IND both with the FDA and the EMA for initiating a phase two clinical study. And we expect to get a clearance from them in the very short time, a matter of a couple of weeks. We are working in parallel to initiate the studies upon receiving the IND clearance. So we started already, already to enroll sites clearing the application with the IRB, we intend to do it uh, very quickly. And the goal is very, is very uh, we are very uh, focused on our goal to complete enrollment very fast. Pluristem have a significant technology and logistic uh, capabilities and competitive advantage. We are able to get to any clinical site uh, in the US and in Europe within a matter of hours. So we're gonna utilize that, that will allow us to enroll patients very quickly 
and the, 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 the goal is to complete enrollment and to have a data readout prepared very soon. We will come with a more, more uh, accurate guidelines upon receiving the clearance and informing you about the size of the study and the number of sites that we are actually engaging. And uh, since we have the capability to manufacture, uh, Pluristem has a big focus uh, on its manufacturing capabilities, and we will be able to maintain a full expanded access program uh, in parallel to these clinical studies. That will allow us to assess the potency of our product in a different uh, condition, severity condition of the patients, and also potentially to get into a financial arrangements with government or states then that will allow us to treat patients now under the expanded access program uh, in both of the territories. Um, it's very important though for us, as we announced today, signing this year, European Investment Bank funding. This is something, something that allows us actually to work very quickly, efficiently, and to make sure that we have the resources to implement the program and to complete it very soon. So I would like to take again this opportunity to thank the European Investment Bank for their belief in what we do and for their supporting this program. Next slide. Thank you, Yaki. And now we um, move forward to the question and answer session. We will start with uh, Matthew Kaplan. Uh, please activate your uh, mic and uh, camera, Matthew, so we can um, bring you on stage. Uh, from some reason, uh, we see that you are. Matthew, there. you need to click on the camera and the microphone icon in the yes, top left. Yes, right. uh, oh. There is a problem with um, uh, Matthew. If you are on the call, if you can please uh, uh, write us on the chat because, um, as we see, you are not uh, on the line right now. So um, we will get back to you later, and we will proceed to RK. Can you hear me? Because. Hi, RK. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you for Perfect. Oh, good, good. Um, th thank you very much uh, for holding this uh, uh, session, um, you know, very educative and very helpful. Uh, just a quick question um, uh, to both uh, um, uh, the EIB folks as well as the company. Um, how how do you uh, plan to utilize these funds? Or you know, are these funds being earmarked for specific projects, uh, or could the funds be used across the board uh, for development of the pipeline by the company as well as uh, commercialization of the products when they get to uh, so that you know, you're not specifically saying this is the only project that you can work on. <laughs> Please say. Thank you for your question, Okay, So uh, as mentioned before, the purpose of the EAB in promoting this financing is to support Pluristem activity, R&D, not only for the COVID-19 uh, indication, but also for the ongoing studies, both CLI and muscle regeneration, of course, but other developments that Pluristem have in its pipeline in order to promote and support our activities in the European Union, but of course, and also to support the companies in its path towards commercialization of, its, of the product, but not necessarily with the COVID-19 project, but also with the other indications as well. Thank you. Anna, okay. do you want to add something? No, I just wanted to confirm what you were saying, that basically we started cooperation this, um, uh, with uh, Pluristem before uh, COVID happened. So we, our initial plan was to finance actually the uh, late stage clinical trials that the company is uh, currently uh, performing. And uh, only with you know, the current situation and uh, with related to COVID and this uh, great um, unmet medical need, we uh, we decided also to support uh, the, this early stage, uh, quite opportunistic uh, program related to, to, to COVID. But in general, we, we want to support the company and its, uh, its R&D development and also 
um, early stage of commercialization. Thank you. Okay. If I may add, um, EIB is a policy-driven quasi-equity invest. While this is venture debt, it is neither a grant, of course not, but it is also not dedicated to particular cost items. In a way, um, the European Union makes an investment in an overall business proposition, therefore a very heavy due diligence on the managerial capabilities of the company to be done, because this is in the end the team um, the European Union's taxpayers are investing in, and um, we trust on the judgment of the team to the same degree that this really worked very well, because when the COVID-19 threat arrived, the team was, avail was available and able much faster than almost anybody else to turn this into a global health mm -hmm. and a commercial opportunity for the company alike. So we like that. And same for the European Union and the European investment. Um, can, I, can I ask a, a follow-up question? Um, um, Mr. Keller, you, you also stated in your opening remarks um, uh, so that you were impressed by the manufacturing ability of um, Pluristem. So how important does um, the manufacturing piece become, um, especially during your due diligence, both by Anna's team and also your team? Um, this is uh, the Achilles heel of this industry. And um, Pluristem has made a very diligent strategic decision a long time ago to at this stage over invest capability and is now able to capitalize on it, both in a financial aspect, but also strategically. I mean, the, as you know, this is a quite effective and efficient process, you can make a lot with one single placenta, and um, it is an off-the-shelf product. So um, this bundle of an application, a very ethical uh, way of uh, actually generating the raw material, and a highly industrialized and specific manufacturing process that's almost impossible to copy. You don't even need to patent, you can't copy that creates a blend um, that um, yeah, is very interesting to us as a public benefit, um, as a company promoting public benefit investments. Okay. Uh, thank you, RK. And now, uh, Matthew, yes, I see that you are now okay with the mic. Okay, you are on stage. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so my question is really for the representatives home from uh, Kinup and, and Anna from EIB. Um, I guess, what did you see when you performed your diligence on Pluristem's technology and their, specifically their programs, not just in COVID-19, but also in CLI and recovery from hip replacement surgery that encouraged you to make um, the substantial investment? Anna, do you want to go first? Then I follow you. Yes, uh, it's somehow related to already your previous con uh, comment on the uh, great manufacturing facilities, uh, which are really state of the art, um, and the technology. So obviously, this we all like to with my technical team, and they are they do have very um, deep uh, experience in uh, in uh, technology uh, in life science companies so they were really impressed with uh, companies and um, laboratories manufacturing facilities r d uh, what we specifically liked uh, about the about pluristem is basically whole package <laughs> so uh, so we like that the company has great technology platform which um, which uh, can op with very advanced pipeline phase three uh, but also with possibility for a follow-up indication, for new indications, and to implement those new indications quite fast, like we can see now with uh, COVID-19. Uh, so that was uh, obviously very impressive, 
uh, COVID-19 was basically like a, a sherry on the cake. Um, what we also liked a lot is uh, the uh, skilled management team, which is fantastic. We could see that the, the company home management team, all the employees, everybody is very dedicated. Uh, there are right people in the right place um, and since we have just a hands-off approach which I explained before uh, we really don't want to engage into managing of the company actively we just want to invest and let the best people in place to deliver deliver on the investment plan so that was very uh, important for us the, the cooperation that we had during due diligence it built trust um and uh, yes and so we are very very happy with uh, everything what the company can can offer not only from the technical point which is obviously important but we invest mainly in people the ideas and the skills to uh, bring this uh, company forward okay maybe if you allow me to add um the mix is um you have one manufacturing platform two products and really seven applications uh, the company is looking at. And um, in these product candidates, sort of uh, with PLX pad, with CLI, the company is obviously very advanced. Um, muscle regeneration and uh, CLI are simply huge and very relevant markets. And the chance to deploy this product in addition into COVID-19 is great. Over and above that, um, the business model that potentially is behind ELX R18, which is a stockpiling business model, is of course super attractive. And uh, with, as you know, stockpiling economy is um, the golden nugget um, because you basically sell every X time units a very large number that go in a warehouse and hopefully sit there never to be deployed. This is very beautiful for a company. I'm talking here about acute radiation syndrome, um, application of PLX R18. And this certainly for our case made a difference because it the company has a balance of obtaining world-class insights into really relevant business models as well as the clinical development path and the fundamental research. That's very helpful. Maybe just a, a quick follow up for the, the two of you. Um, when you're thinking about this from a financial point of view, what, which of the programs, when you think of them, um, uh, have the most uh, significant potential in your mind? Um, um, for for uh, you know driving revenues in the future. Well, um, I, what, what I will now do is a personal statement. Um, this is neither EIB's nor my organization's um, opinion. I think um, in the uh, short and midterm, it's um, CLI and uh, the acute radiation syndrome which will drive. This, of course, depends on how the COVID crisis continues. On COVID, um, the company is following a access pricing strategy, um, which means um, not to take undue benefit from a global health emergency, but of course, looking at the economic upside in parallel. So we shall see how this unfolds and um, where we are going. But all of those are well-picked opportunities. Um, all of those species domains are highly relevant and represent substantive underserved markets. And in all of those, there is no proper alternative um, that works. So in all these cases, um, the PLX product would not replace a good other alternative, but be a, probably very soon a first choice for physicians. For servicing their clients. Uh, Anna, would you like to add something? Uh, our approach to to the future revenues of the company was um, sort of uh, similar to to, to Holmes. Um, so again, this is 
our opinion, uh, we um, believe and we hope that the um, programs, the therapies for CLI indications will be really um, will offer the, the biggest potential um, for for the company's current pipeline. Uh, regarding uh, the same for, of course, uh, hip regeneration, um, muscle regeneration after hip fracture and and uh, uh, RAS. Uh, as it comes to COVID, uh, the market, uh, well, uh, the situation is very dynamic, so it's uh, very difficult right now to to have any assumptions how it can. Uh, um, develop and make any assumptions regarding pricing of this treatment, um, market uh, uh, pickup, and so on. So we built, let's say, our case around the existing pipeline that the company has been developing over many years and before uh, COVID. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, thank you both for sharing your your thoughts and your your perspective. Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Uh, any additional questions? Uh, this is the time to ask. The chat is open, so if you have any um, additional questions that anyone would like to ask. Okay. Um, so, the, thank you, um, um, RK, and uh, thank you, Matthew. Um, the recording of this call will be archived and available for review after the event on Pluristem website under events. We also published a few minutes ago a press release summarizing the main points of this call. Thank you all for your participation. Uh, thank you, all the analysts. Uh, thank you, of course, uh, Om. Thank you, Anna. And thank you, of course, Chen and Yaki. Um, and uh, thank you for your time. And uh, you may now uh, disconnect. Uh, if anyone wants to ask or do. Uh, you want greeting or to say uh, I would like to thank everyone as I said again to Home Keller and to, to Anna and the AB and to all the investors that are working with the company for many many years uh, and I hope the coming uh, few months and the coming year is actually an important one for us that we we're gonna continue our journey to access to market and I'm sure that uh, this European investment bank support will be very meaningful for us in order to achieve our goal and purpose. So I'd like to thank you for the support and for participating in this call. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you, Han. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.